live from the Congress Center in London, England. It's The Cube at MIT and the Digital Economy, the second machine age. Brought to you by headline sponsor, MIT. Welcome back to London, everybody. This is Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman, and this is theCUBE, and we're here covering MIT's initiative on the digital economy. Roberto Rigobon is here. Roberto, welcome to theCUBE, great to oh, see you. Thank you, thank you so much for so, inviting me. So tell us about the, the, the Billion Prices, Prices Project. Project. <laughs> uh, what, what is that all about? So uh, several years ago, um, I would say actually nine years ago, a uh, student of mine, Alberto Cavallo, um, decided that he, he wanted to try to compute alternative measures of inflation rate. And um, he was motivated because in Argentina, he's from Argentina, he was motivated because in Argentina they intervened the statistical office and, and they were lying about the inflation rate. So he wanted to construct the truthful inflation rate, in fact. Uh, so he started with food and things like that. And then I realized uh, the tremendous uh, potential of uh, just taking that to all the sectors, not only food. And we started working together. And uh, right now uh, we download from more than 70 countries worldwide. We download on almost every sector uh, information from the web uh, on service prices and, uh, and, and, and stores as well. I mean, stores are the easy ones. Getting the price of a taxi in London is a little bit harder. Uh, and what we do is we have to make like reservations uh, every day from the airport to the hotel and they, they tell you then the price of taxis. <laughs> and that's, so you have to be kind of creative about how to get the data. <laughs> but then uh, you, you have to collect everything, yeah. So is a robot doing that or you actually Yeah, 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 no, 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 a person cannot do that because it, I mean, you have, you, you have far too many cities in the world to actually do that with a person, no, so it's, it's actually a robot. You make sure you cancel those reservations, right? Yeah, 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 we do it. <laughs> <laughs> actually, okay. we ask for a quote, not a reservation. Ah, <laughs> It's yes, a right. quote. Okay, it's good. A, so when you ask for the quote, uh, it, it is perfectly fine. So okay, so you're you're basically taking you know many 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 data points. It's not a sampling of the data exactly. points as we talked about offline. You know, big data. We talk about Hadoop. Sampling is dead, and you've gone right to the heart of it. So what does the data show? So I mean, they're they're very surprising in some countries. For example, the the inflation rate that we compute online is very similar to the to the one that is computed by the statistical office. Like which, was, which countries do a good job? Uh, uh, I would say that all developed nations uh, do a very, very good job. So the, the numbers are not identical and the, month will ne and the numbers will never be identical month by month. Sure, right. And the reason is that the online business just moves faster than the offline business. No? So imagine in Italy, if you want to increase the price of pasta, well, you increase first to the online users because you know, they're probably richer, they don't care about the price, they have no memory but you will not increase the price of pasta in the streets uh, and expecting not to be burned in the store, no? Uh, <laughs> so I imagine increasing the price of bread in France uh, will be that. It, it, so they don't increase the price of bread, they just make the bread smaller, and that's my version of how the croissant was invented, no? Yeah. It used to be this size, <laughs> <laughs> just put it that size. So, uh, so in, indeed, uh, they move at different periods, but when you look at a year on year, uh, for example, the United States, I get a little bit more inflation than the, than the BLS, and I would say that this is, uh, on the 0.02, 0.03%, so it's nothing, uh, the numbers are very small. Uh, in Japan, I always get a little bit less, and uh, that would be about 10 basis points less than the official data, but that's the order of discrepancy. Now, when you go to emerging markets, for example, in Brazil, our inflation rate is 2% uh, bigger than the official one. So, so their official one will be, let's say, six and a half or seven, uh, the one that we will compute will be at least two percent more than that on average, and it's um, and it's not. I mean, it's not because we have price controls or not. We collect the prices from the items that have price controls. I just collect way more items. What happens in the statistical office is that they put too much weight on the products that have control prices. So by construction, you have a lot of items that the prices are flat, no? And then Argentina our inflation rate will be three times the official one, not, not 3%. So if they say eight, we, we will get 24. Okay, so yeah. the, in the former example, the developed nations, it's more of a timing issue, yes. maybe. Uh, but in, right. in the less developed nations, you're saying that is, it's the, essentially the government's hiding the ball, is that right? Well, in some sense, it's, well, in some sense it's statistical capacity is how much can you do. I mean, the, the poorer the country, the less resources the statistical so office the, okay. has. So, so it's a flawed measurement system. It's a flawed measurement system because of resources, some of them. In other countries, it's just manipulation. So 
So in the country, yeah. if your country's name, Argentina, Russia, or Venezuela, they are just manipulating the data. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the other ones might be... So they don't like you very much, I would imagine. Yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah. yeah no, no, they don't. <laughs> What's been the reaction uh, to your project in the data? Oh, well, so uh, what is interesting is, for example, in developed nations, like a country like Australia, where they produce the inflation rate only once every quarter, Actually, our data has been very well received by the central bank, by the statistical office, by, by everybody, in the sense that we are actually complementing. And for example, Australia is one of our earliest countries. We have this data from 2008, and it's just remarkably close to the statistical office. So in that sense, they use it very actively uh, to, you know, as a measurement of daily inflation rate. Mm -hmm. so, um, so that, so in development nation has been very well received. In, in countries like Brazil, it's well received. They just disregard it. Yeah. <laughs> and say that's, that's, uh, that's the inflation rate online. I said, yeah, you know, yours is the inflation rate offline. <laughs> it's not clear which one is better. Well, the academics in Brazil must appreciate. Yeah, yeah, so that, that, that is very well received. So, yeah. but, but, but it's interesting, uh, central banks like uh, the Chilean central bank, uh, it really appreciates uh, the data because mm. it, it gives them a very early signal. So, so what happened is that when there's going to be inflation, you see that in the online prices about two or three months before really? you okay. see it on the, yes, because I mean, this, there's a very big delay. So as a central banker, when I can see this very fast shift in the, in the online inflation rate, and I can infer from that what is going to happen in the economy is actually very valuable. So central for them. banks are using your data. Yeah, yeah, yes, and and, and 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 I imagine some private sector and, and financial system also uses the, the yeah, data yeah. because of the same reason. It's yeah, I, I was curious. Do you do you know? Are there businesses or traders that are watching what you're doing and being able to take advantage so, of those so opportunities? Uh, I, I hope they are. In some sense, what we do is we distribute this. Uh, a big part of our our, our research is. You know, about three years ago, we did a spin-off. This was incredibly expensive uh, to do with, uh, uh, with resources from MIT, which, by the way, this was created entirely with resources from MIT. So we did a spin-off, and now we actually distribute this through, uh, through a bank, in a State Street Bank, and we distribute the indices. So I, I really hope that somebody's using it. Yeah. So, so how do you distribute? You have an API into the, into the no, data set? No, so actually, because I'm not very good at selling, uh, so, <laughs> so I, I, we just have an agreement where they distribute and they are the ones that sell. I just give the index to them and then they are the ones that distribute. They have a research webpage and uh, what we do is to, what is publicly available is the inflation rate of Argentina and the US that is entirely publicly available. So you can go to, to Alberto's or my webpage and you can see the inflation rate of these two countries. Mm -hmm. Uh, but um, but except for those two, the rest are distributed through the through the state street. for pay for a free and I think it's for free. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah it's but, it's they, for free. but but then state street will f uh, is funding essentially. Yeah, yeah, the, state the street project, is actually so. funding a big part of what we do. Yes, yeah, okay. a very big part. Yes. Yeah, I mean, can you speak to? Uh, we were talking a little bit before off camera, just the, the growth of this and how much resources. Oh. I mean, you said it was you, yeah, you named it a billion dollar uh, billion, billion, billion prices. prices before it was a billion, and yes. now it's over a billion prices a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so indeed, indeed, when we started. My goal was to actually try to get one billion prices in a quarter. Uh, and, and remember, I'm collecting every day, so this is totally cheating, no? Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, and the reason is, you know, I, I know it sounds stupid, but it, it collecting a million prices is still very hard. Uh, so I wanted a billion in a quarter. And today we have the ability to download way more than a billion in a day. So, so I mean, we don't because we don't want to. I, I mean, there, there's certain items that you don't need to download all the items, like books, for example. I mean, if you go to Amazon.com, for example, they will have about 17 different million books sold on that particular day. So now, how many of them you really need to compute the inflation rate of books? Probably 500. I mean, you, you need a very small sample of books, which are the hot books. Everything else is sold once a month or once a week, uh, so you need the prices. So even though we have the ability to download now what we do is we restrict ourselves. We, we know that we don't need all 17 million to compute the inflation rate of books, so we don't, down, we don't need to go all that way. So, so in, in this process we have learned that you don't always need all the data. Now in some sectors you need electronics. Electronics you need all the data, otherwise you will make humongous mistakes. Because I need the new iPhone to be in the data the day, and the old iPhone to be in the data to be able to compute an index. So, Oh, we're getting the high sign, but we have to talk about the thousand Big Macs before yes, we go. Yes, our Tell new index, <laughs> what, what we have done is, uh, uh, 
uh, borrowing from the economy's idea of the Big Mac, the, the beautiful idea is that you get the exact same item to compare across nations. And um, we said, well, in our data, we actually have a lot of items that are identical worldwide. I mean, I have uh, Sara's data, so I have the same T-shirt, and H&M, the same T-shirt, Nike, the same shoes. And so, so what we did was to create this index that compares identical items worldwide, uh, it, and it's a thousands of them, and I call it the Thousand Big Macs project because it's, you know, it's in, the, in that spirit. And the beauty is that this is more or less tells me how expensive the tradable products are in a particular country. And, and when you think about it, all the tradable products are online. Food is online, electronics are online, clothing online, uh, cosmetics are online. I mean, everything except cars. Yeah. You can find it online. And therefore, what we can do is we have a massive set of the basket and we compare it. So we we detect what I call macroeconomic imbalances. So when Brazil becomes more expensive on everything, gasoline, food, electronics, when it's too expensive, something has to happen to the exchange rate. And in fact, we are actually finding in our research that nine months down the road, when we find these signals, nine months down the road, they tend to depreciate. And it's- They take uh, action. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, so for example, right now in England, uh, there's a, a lot of uh, questions about what is going to happen to the pound dollar rate. There's a lot of political volatility. Yeah, what's happening with the sterling? Well, actually, I think in the sterling, for example, in our data, it looks like it's right about the equilibrium, that there's no trend. So there's going to be a lot of noise due to politics, but I don't think that the trend will drive in too far from the 150. And so, so it is, so in our data, it roots exactly where it should be. In other words, I, and, and England versus the US, we have thousands and thousands and thousands of items. Is that okay? It's reaching a big number. Uh, when I look at all of them and I ask who is too expensive and who is too cheap, the proportion is very small. Between England, it's a, this actually the data from yesterday. Okay, so, so it's like balanced. Yesterday. You would predict stability. It's, well, <laughs> I mean, volatility yeah. due to politics, yeah, but yeah, there's yeah. no trend in that sense. So that, that is mostly noise. So, yeah, you uh, can normalize that line over exactly, time. Exactly, yeah, you can normalize, exactly, that's yeah. the way we did it. So it's kind of very interesting. <laughs> and, uh, and anyway, I'm very excited about this. And that's, this is the first time we're, we're going to present that research. Here oh, in we're this really excited to hear this, uh, your, your conversation this afternoon. We'll be broadcasting it live. So Roberto, Good. thanks very much for coming no, to the No, thank you, thank you for having me. Congratulations on the research you. and appreciate your sharing. Oh no, thank you, thank you you guys for having All me. All right, thank keep you. right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest right after this. We're live from London, this is MIT IDE. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back. <laughs>